Big scanner bag. Scanner bag. I keep screwing it up today. So I got the first leg of my trip done. I'm in the middle, of beginning of the second leg. Dropped into Triana to catch a flight. Headed off to Gdansk. Probably not saying any of these names correctly, but spend the night there. Not even the night, probably a few hours. And then head over to Stockholm. Gonna go grab a bus, so I just came out of the Hilton. Uh, gonna go up here, cross this little creek right here, and then uh, catch a bus, go down to the city center. So this is day two of my uh, crazy journey. So I've got some pretty bold plans. I hope it all comes together. Tonight I'm uh, proving my, my statement that the high cost of cheap flights. So in order to make this work, the cheap flights were routed me from here to Poland and then Poland to Stockholm. But the flight tonight is 8 p.m. to I think 11, maybe 11.30. And then I fly out at 6.30. So I've got about 30, 35 minutes one way from the airport to the hotel. So I'm guessing I'll get to the hotel at midnight and back on the road 334 to make my 6 a.m. flight. Gonna intentionally cut that a little shy, but I don't intend to uh, unpack at all or anything. So I'm wearing these clothes. Uh, I'll wear these clothes tomorrow. When I get to the hotel, I'll just take a good shower and uh, go to bed it up and hopefully there'll be some decent coffee available and then uh, get to the airport get on the plane and then tomorrow morning about 7 30 I should be in Stockholm so that's the first second second leg the first leg was catching the bus from Saranda to Triana uh, one of the things I love about that Hilton is it's so easy to get to and from and it's great. So, you know, I asked for a room on the sixth floor uh, right by the gym because they have a little laundry room. So I was able to go in there, do my laundry, and get so everything I'm having wear is clean. It's all fresh and I'm ready to roll. So we're gonna cross over here and there's a bus station right there. So that'll take me down to the city center and then I'll catch a bus to the airport. So one of the great things about Albania is coffee, espresso specifically. Uh, they do cappuccinos pretty good. Uh, I'm not a big cappuccino drinker, but um, espresso, like finding a regular drip cup of coffee is nearly impossible. I found one I really enjoy in Saranda. It's probably the best like drip coffee I found in the whole country so far. The Hilton actually is starting to do a brewed coffee. It's not really drip coffee. It's got a little, tiny different character to it but my point where I was getting to is this produce shop and then just up about a block up on the left or not a block like 50 meters up you can see the sun hitting the sidewalk right there there's another little coffee shop does a great 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 cup of coffee no bitterness at all I love it uh, but it's a little late and a little hot for some coffee so the buses are super easy here in Albania. All you do is get on and a guy will come around and ask you for money. Currently it's a 40 lek a ride. That's like 40 cents. And so you just get on and he comes around and asks for your money and he gives you a ticket. Now save that ticket because another guy will jump on randomly and ask you for that ticket. And if you don't have it, I don't know what happens, but I don't want to know what happens. Uh, but yeah, so I always, you know, make sure you save that. Uh, in case the guy comes by to check you. Right now we're going to go down, I'm going to go down to the uh, Skanderberg Square, Skanderbeg, I always say Skanderberg, Skanderbeg Square, walk around a little bit, enjoy it, and then uh, catch a bus. Now I can afford the taxi to the airport, but 
I'm kind of like, why? I've got plenty of time and the bus is cheap and comfortable. So I figured it'd be a good exercise and, you know, gets me downtown, walk around a bit, um, go visit some old sites and such, but no, no real reason, you know, to spend the extra money when I've got all the free time in the world. Um, so I think it's 400 lek on the, the shuttle bus. And I think it's, if I remember right, it's like 12 or 17 on the, uh, maybe 20, maybe 20 or 27, I can't remember the taxi. Uh, I know there's a set fee coming back. I think it's 27 or something coming back, but going out, it's all meter. Um, so we'll see, but I'm going to hang out, wait for this bus. <laughs> so I jumped off here at, uh, I believe it's Mother Teresa square and they've got these, uh, riser set up. looks like there's going to be some sort of event here. No idea what's going on. There's always something going on. Oh, you probably missed that. So I, they've got these risers set up here. It looks like there's going to be some sort of event set up uh, going on. And the Air Albania Stadium's right here behind me. There's these big pillars, and that's the Air Albania Stadium. There's a bunch of restaurants and shops underneath there, so it's a good little place to visit. Um, that round tower, let me see. So I'm headed way down there. See those big buildings, like the biggest buildings in the background there? We're going past those. Uh, but this is a nice walk. It's a beautiful street. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you some pictures that way once I get up here. But um, I just jumped off here because it was convenient. And I got time to walk, so why not walk? There's the, uh, I believe that's a Marriott, the tall tower part of the stadium. And this is a square, so there's, I don't even know where to find out what event's going on here, but we're headed down this sidewalk here uh, towards the Scannerberg Square. That yellow building up there is about where we're headed. Uh, in fact, we're headed right in front of that yellow building. But this building, let's see if I can get a good picture of it right there that building is just beautiful it's just a beautiful picture and these sidewalks are just fabulous i love them so i was saying these sidewalks are just fabulous and one thing that's interesting is having all these cobblestones you know i'm not anti-skateboarder but skateboarding's got its time and place and having Cobblestones downtown really reduces the amount of skaters you get. It makes the sidewalks much more usable as a sidewalk, especially when you've got a nice big bike lane like that. But yeah, I just love the way they keep the trees up. There's a really neat park right there. Maybe I'll stop in and show you some of it. In fact, I've got time. I should go through and do that. So again, just a great little park here. It's always plenty of places to sit. I'm not sure what that's about. Just follow the path here. Plenty of benches. Look at all the flowers. And it is a couple days away from August and it is blazing hot here see the uh, umbrellas are to keep the sun because it is that hot it's not Vegas hot but it's it's hot some little metal artwork and are you seeing the round dome back there we'll circle over there but I love these stone pathways That's one of the infamous bunkers. I'll walk over there and show it to you. Do a little super speed. Always watch where you're stepping. 
So this is one of the bunkers. And we'll go up here, there's more up here. smell the lower and there's another bunker up here but a couple other things that are important so don't quote me on this but if I remember right these are out of the mines from when they were under the rule I can't remember the dictators name when they're if I remember this correctly when they're under the rule of the dictator for all those years uh, there were people forced to work in mines and a lot of people died in them and evidently these are stays from the mine if i may be getting this all wrong if i am i'll uh cut it or text over but um my understanding is these are stays from the mine and kind of a tribute to all the people who lost their lives and we've got another bunker here this one's still got the metal on i guess most of them had this hardened metal on top but it was you know, pillaged off to, uh, people would use it you know, for other things, repurpose it. And that's a piece of the Berlin Wall. Like everywhere, graffiti's you know, hard to stop. But this talks about it. This is from a uh, checkpoint. Concrete supports form the gallery of the notorious mine of Spock, a forced labor camp from for political prisoners from 1968 to 1990. So this is talking about the three things. There's a fragment of the Berlin Wall, the bunker, and then the concrete supports from the notorious mine of Spock. camera off, get some good footsteps in, and uh, head down to the square. Okay, how cool is that? It's a uh, cooling station, so it blows mist on you. Blows, uh, those are misters. And you know, last summer it tripped me out because there's a bunch of these in the park down by the lake. And it just kind of blew me away. I didn't, I don't remember any downtown here, but uh, they're they're actually really effective and it was funny because you'd watch kids go back and forth through it five or six times uh, and when it's as hot as it is out now believe me you'll love these things so i'm gonna hit the mister myself i don't really need it at the moment but it's fun let's see today's not as bad i think it's only high 30s today but so they've got the scaffolding down on the pyramid. I see people up on top, but it's still fenced in. So I'm not sure. Huh, I didn't plan on this, but I may venture over there. This is another park that's, you know, just a nice seating area. It's got some nice statues here. And I love that they have statues of all the important people. Um, you know, there's one street up there. It's got I can't remember if these are brothers or um, what their relation is, but it's three family members here. And then this right here in the corner behind this basketball was like my favorite pizza place. Yeah, so that. That was my favorite pizza place. Uh, pizza's off the menu now, and they had a Red Bull ice cream that was very unique. So it's right across from the pyramid over there, and uh, there's more parks in front of us. But man, come midnight if you're hungry, 
this is this is the place to hit. Yep, another park. Not even a block down the road, across the street from the last park across the creek. Uh, this is Children's Park. There's a casino over there. There's a big playground here. There's a nice fountain over there. And there's a dog run up there with some obstacles if you want to train your dog. Uh, it's got a nice little dog run, but you'll find a lot of dogs here in the morning playing. And then I actually saw a lot of pickup games of soccer, like informal soccer going on here. But it's a nice little park. Lots of shade, lots of trees. And just another example of what you can do when you want to have nice things in the world. Okay, you can kind of make out the uh, Skanderbeg statue there. We'll get up there in a minute. Um, this street right here, it's got a white stone. I don't know what, what the stone actually is. Might be marble, but I doubt it. But it's got white stones. It's kind of slick in the rain, but it is loaded with restaurants and bars and places to eat. There's an old castle down there. At the end is Top Tawny Mall. There's an old uh, castle entrance and all kinds of historical stuff down there. And then Bunk Art is right over there. But if you're downtown and you're looking for something to do at night that isn't wild and crazy, bar scene, that's a nice little place to have some cocktails, sit and chat and enjoy your friends and family's company. And just spectacular views everywhere you go down here. See everywhere you go is just great. I won't bother shutting it off now, I'll just super speed this. Museum of Natural History, well worth the time and money. Opera. Big Skanderberg, Skanderbag. I keep screwing it up today. Statue with the flag. Yeah, look at that. Okay, now, important travel tip. See those clouds forming on the mountains? I got here 50 weeks ago. I first landed in Triana. I was out on a day like today. I got caught with a little rainstorm. I thought it was just a little rainstorm. No. It came heavy for probably an hour, hour and a half. Heavy. Luckily, after about 30 minutes of getting rained on, trying to hide under this can of overhang, these old gentlemen called me into their gentleman's club. No, not a strip club. More like a fraternal. Not exactly sure what it is. I've gone back a few times, but uh, it may have been like their version of a VFW. I'm not sure. But they called me up in there. We had some coffee. May or may not have had a few beers and did our best to talk to each other. Had a good time. But my point is, is if you're here in the summertime, August, September, I'm not sure about July, but here in August, September, take an umbrella with you everywhere you go. Because it comes quick and hard. Thunder, lightning, the whole nine yards. You know, no matter how many times I stand out here, I still get this just strange feeling of happiness and comfort. I don't know what it is, but it's just a strange place in that regard. Not strange, bad, just whenever I stop out here, I always just feel comfortable and happy. Is it just me? I don't know. Skanderbeg Square, definitely worth the visit. You know, I've asked many people about the statue and I haven't gotten a answer from anybody really um, 
there's no marker and nobody seems to know much about it but it's interesting right here on the square got me a quick lunch for the road before I hit the road so I don't want to get to the airport and be starving because all they have at the airport is pretty much uh, bread with some mayonnaise on it they call a sandwich and other snacks like that so I'll uh, get my second meal of the day here and be done and then just get some coffee at the airport Okay, so Ganderbeg Square is that way, <clears throat> but we're over here behind the Opera House. And again, another beautiful park, plenty of places to sit. And this is where you catch the shuttle to the airport. Too easy. Now, if you're running late, you can always grab a taxi. Or, <clears throat> or if you take the shuttle from the airport, there's almost always taxis here. Uh, all the way up until after midnight. This is kind of a local sitting spot. That's been my experience anyway. So super easy to get around and um, there's a little snack shack up there. There's a coffee shop across the street, a couple coffee shops across the street that way. And I just had lunch at Street Food, which is you know, 400, 500 meters that way across the street, um, across the street from that building there. So that's your orientation and Yep, that's all I got. So this sign is new to me, uh, but kind of lines it out. Every hour on the hour, they leave. Uh, so it makes it super easy. Okay, so catching the bus to the airport here in Triana is super easy. The, uh, it's right behind the opera from the square, from Skanderbeg Square. And there's a sign right there that tells you about it. It leaves every hour on the hour. It's 400 lek. And these poor gentlemen in the bench in front of me, they've been repeating that to everybody that walks up. Uh, so bring them a soda or something. But they're just the uh, other bus drivers waiting for their turn, I, I suspect. But yeah, 400 lek, super easy. I've taken this before, but it's gotten better the buses are bigger and it's a lot more organized than it was last winter so things just keep getting better and better and better here in Albania even if you didn't grow up with a father pretend like you did it's not hard just pretend like you grew up with a father So that's the bus terminal behind me. So once you get off the bus, you look for the big building. Or if you're coming out of the airport, just turn left, KFC, all the way to the end. Buses are all the way at the end back there. Too easy. So just remember, nothing's ever uh, standard in traveling. So got to the airport fine. The shuttle bus was great. Popped off, got into line. You know, it's kind of a S show down there check-in, you know, because they wait for the last minute and then everybody mad rushes it. Uh, but I got through, you know, the guy that helped me was superb. But like the customer service at this airport is usually the best. Uh, I, can't, I can tell you tons of stories about great customer service here. Then I get to the uh, customs, not customs, the security, and they take my little pocket knife. But I've flown with it through this airport twice through you know half a dozen other airports including london and no problem and then this uh nana cafe you know they have wi-fi set up for customers but you know i don't get a password i guess i didn't order enough or whatever but uh i don't know so just remember stay flexible so just remember stay flexible big scanner bag i keep screwing it up today <laughs> 